Good morning. Today we are going to make a 2D thermal analysis with two internal cavities, which in the Saphir terminology we call voids. And we start at this stage where we have already created three plane surfaces by the elementary entities add rectangle. So the first rectangle started here and has the opposite corner here. Then we have a rectangle from here to here, and the third rectangle from here to here. And we see the three labels of the three plane surfaces. If we want the two internal rectangles to be cavities, we have to make a Boolean operation. Boolean difference. We have already done that in a previous example, but we do it again here. And the difference has to be made between surfaces. First, we have to select the object, that's the surface from which we want to punch out other surfaces. So the surface is selected here. This is surface one. E to end the selection. Now we have to select the tools. First tool is surface two which I select here. The other tool is surface three, which I select here. And before typing E to end my selection, I check here. Yes, the object I want to delete, the object, which is the full rectangle, I want to keep only the punched rectangle. And I want to delete the tool, which are the two internal plane surfaces, which I want to get rid of. So I'm ready to type E. And if I do that, I see now that I have only one single plane surfaces. And here, and here, I don't have any surface anymore. We continue by adding a few physical groups. First one would be a curve. That would be for the exposed side. And here it is, type E, and I apply the frontier ISO. Now I add another curve, which is unexposed. Here it is, type E, and apply the frontier F20. Let's check here by the view command, view frontier. Here is the F ISO and here is the F20. Okay. Clean. Now I want to add a physical group, which is the surface. So I will give it the name section and I select it here. Type E. In this physical group, I will create a new material. Let's choose some concrete. Okay, assume we are happy with these numbers. And I give to this material the name concrete M. Add update. The material is in the list. It has been created. Now I have to assign the material to the surface. That's the surface material. And I assign concrete M. Add update. Let's check the material from here. View material. OK, we have the material. Now we have to create the voids or the cavities. The voids are physical groups, but they are not surfaces. Although, of course, we know that the cavity may cover a surface in Saphir, the boundary conditions and the heat exchange will occur at the lines which define the surface. So my physical group is made of curves. The first void will be called, obviously, void one. And I have to select the lines which border my cavity. If I'm happy, I type E. I have to assign void constraint, and this is void number one. 
which is OK, add, update. And each void has to be a different physical group. So I will obviously create a physical group here. What is fortunate here is that I created these lines, in fact, when I created the rectangle. And when a rectangle is created as an elementary entity, the lines which make the rectangle are defined in a counterclockwise direction, which is what is requested for the void. If you create the borders of the void by another command, let's say by a combination of lines, it is important that all these lines are defined in a direction that makes the void described in a counterclockwise direction. That means the tangent to each line has to be directed in such a way that the cavity will be on the left side of the tangent of the line. And this is the case here. So I will add a new physical group, add curve. It will be called void two. I have to select. The order in which I select the lines is not important. What was important was the tangent of the lines. I have defined the lines, type E. It's a void constraint that I will apply, but of course now we are in void 2. Add update. And let's check. We can check what we did here by view voids and sim voids. Okay, and we can see that we have void 1 and void 2, and they are two different entities. I think we are now OK to create the mesh. It's a 2D mesh. In order to have better visibility, I view the material. OK, I want to refine the mesh. Refine by splitting. Here it is. And here I have two centimeters that makes two layers of concrete of one centimeter each. That should be sufficient. All the more if I use the new command diag kappa, which will tend to eliminate the skin effect. I checked my conditions here. Maybe the precision two minus three would be okay. Type print. Let's say every minute. Okay, if, as we have cavities, we don't want to use too big time steps. So 10 seconds and maybe thereafter 12 seconds. Okay, the name of the input file is okay. We are in terminal 2D. I think everything is ready to create the input file here. So it is done. We can check here is the input file and we are going to run Saphir run and it's running well and we can check with diamond this is the result with the previous model you see here that this web was two centimeter wide and this one as well so we don't have exactly a symmetry because this border is adiabatic so the model here is equivalent to having a web of four centimeters let's reload the new model here see it's a little bit thinner here one centimeter here two here and one here so i expect to have symmetrical results let us check that we have two voids that's what we wanted uh, of course we have iso and f20 Let's plot the temperatures and let's go in time. And we see first, in fact, that we have symmetrical results, more or less, yes. So slight variations because of the mesh, of the discretization, but by and large, the temperatures are of the same order of magnitude in all three webs. And we see here this temperature being higher here than here, that means more heat energy has been traveling by radiation and convection in the cavity than by conduction in the webs. That's what we expected. And here's the situation after one hour. Thank you very much.